which hands to play and which hands to fold. Hands that are worth playing are hands that have at least two of the following three qualities in order of importance. 1. Big pair potential. 2. Flush potential. 3. Straight potential. Let's look at the first and most important quality, big pair potential. Despite being a game of many fanciful hands, like straight, full house, four of a kind and straight flush, poker is actually a game of just one pair. Statistically, if a player has unpaired cards, he won't even make one pair or better about 45% of the time after all five board cards are dealt. So, 45% of the time, if you make a pair against one opponent, you have the winning hand. If you have the top pair, you probably have the best hand a lot of the time, which is a reason why people like to play a big pot when they have the top pair on the board. Hands with big pair potential are hands with two cards higher than nine, such as ace-king, ace-queen, ace-jack, ace-ten, king-queen, king-jack, king-ten, queen-jack, queen-ten, jack-ten. Big pocket pairs, like ace-ace, king-king, queen-queen, jack-jack, ten-ten, are excellent to play with, because you are guaranteed to have at least a big pair in your five-card poker hand. Hands that have good flush potential are hands with both cards of the same suit, also known as suited hands. Your chance of making a five-card flush with a suited hand is higher than your chance of making a five-card flush with an unsuited hand because you just need three more cards of the same suit on the board instead of four more cards of the same suit on the board. And hands that have good straight potential are hands with two cards close to each other in rank. The closer the rank, the better. For example, 7-8 has very good straight potential because you can make four different straights with this hand, such as 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 7, 8, 9, 10, Jack. 6, 8 also has good straight potential, but not as good as 7, 8. You can make three different straights with 6, 8, such as 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Hands with two gaps in between the ranks, such as 5, 8 or 7, 10, don't have good straight potential because you can only make two different straights with those hands. Therefore, you should try to avoid playing these kinds of hands. A combination of all three qualities is ideal but usually any hands with big pair potential are worth playing. A hand with just flush or just straight potential is not worth playing. A hand with both straight and flush potential is usually worth playing. The following specific examples should help you to understand the concept of poker hand selection a lot better. Let's look at King 8 suited. This hand does not have any straight potential. You can't form a straight with it. Also, when you make a pair of eights with king eight, you don't usually have the top pair on the board, as it's very possible there's a higher card, such as a nine or a ten or a jack or a queen or an ace on the board. So you can only count on making the top pair of kings for a decent hand. However, the chance of a king coming on the flop is quite small, only about 16%. Overall, even though king-eight suited has flush potential, 
It's still a medium weak hand, which you should fold. What about king nine suited? King nine suited is better than king eight suited, because now it's possible for you to make a straight with this hand. And when you form a pair of nines on the board, it's more likely to be a top pair. King nine suited is therefore a medium strength hand which you can play. King nine offsuit, however, is not really a playable hand. Because despite the good points about having a king and a nine in your hand as described above, this hand does not have any flush potential. What about four five suited? This hand can form four different straights. Ace two three four five, two three four five six, three four five six seven, and four five six seven eight. Additionally, this hand has flush potential too. However, four five suited is actually a bad poker hand to play with. Firstly, there is no big pair potential with this hand at all. Whenever you make a pair with this hand, it's usually the bottom pair on the board. When you form a flush with this hand, it's such a low flush. That sometimes you will end up losing a lot of money to a bigger flush. Finally, when you form a straight with four five, you would only feel safe when the board reads ace two three, and you have the best possible straight. If the board reads six seven eight, for example, you might end up losing a lot of money to someone who has five nine or nine ten for a bigger straight. For the same reasons, hands such as five six suited and six eight suited are not good hands to play. The other crucial factor in choosing a hand to play is the position you are seated at. Watch the "Why is it important to be in position?" video for more information on what and why certain positions are very advantageous. And certain positions are very disadvantageous. When you are playing in a bad position, you need very strong hands to compensate for the positional disadvantage. When you are playing in a good position, you can play with medium strong hands and better, because you have the positional advantage. The following chart tells you the exact hands worth playing, depending on your position. If no one has raised. And it's your turn to act. The under the gun and middle positions are not good positions, since you have to act first pre-flop, and generally have to act later in all of the three later betting rounds. So you need premium starting hands to compensate for the positional disadvantage. As you can see, the hands you should be playing with are Ace Ace, King King, Queen Queen, Jack Jack. Ten, ten, nine, nine, ace, king, ace, queen, ace, jack, suited, and king, queen, suited. Fold all the rest. I know it might seem excessive to fold a pretty hand such as ace, ten, suited, or eight, eight in the under the gun position, but it will save you from playing in many difficult situations. However, if you are sitting on the cut off or the button. And it has been folded around to you. You are in an excellent position. You only have two or three players acting after you in the pre-flop round, and in the three later betting rounds, you will be the last player to act. With this good positional advantage, you can play profitably with a lot more hands. As you can see on the charts, hands you can play include. Any pocket pairs from ace ace to two two. Any suited cards with an ace, such as ace four suited, ace eight suited, are also good to play. The good thing about these hands is that if you make the top pair of aces, you usually have the best hands, and if you make a flush, it's the best possible flush. Next are big card type of hands. 
such as ace king, ace queen, ace jack, ace ten, ace nine, king queen, king jack, king ten, king nine suited, queen jack, queen ten, queen nine suited, jack ten, and jack nine suited. Finally, hands such as ten nine, ten eight suited, eight seven suited, seven six suited, are chosen for their flush and or straight potential. If everyone has folded to you, and you are on the small blind, you will find yourself facing only one player, the big blind. Be very careful here, however. The big blind is acting after you in all four betting rounds: pre-flop, flop, turn, and river. So the big blind has a huge advantage over you on the small blind, and you should be very selective about the choice of hands you play with pre-flop. I recommend playing with any pocket pairs from ace ace to eight eight, and any two picture cards such as king ten, queen ten, ace jack, king jack, jack ten. You need the discipline to fold all the rest of the hands, even medium strong looking ones such as jack nine or ace eight. I didn't mention the big blind position here. This is because, when no one has raised and you are on the big blind, you can just check, and get to see the flop with any hands.